Okay, so the conversation that we're working on here is on these doors, what I understand you want to do is to be able to take these doors and get them folded out completely out of the way and parallel to the wall. Um, you've got a couple of different openings happening here. This is obviously doors that swing out and these doors clearly swing in. So what I would like to investigate with you is is the following. So you've got a jam, you've got a jam, door, 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 and door. And obviously you want to take, you know, you've got you've got you've got a set going this way and you've got a set going this way. So what we want to do is take these doors and obviously make them look like this when it's all said and done. Your hinge barrel will be here, your hinge barrel will be here. Okay, and so these two are going to go this way, these two are going to go this way. It's going to look like this when it's all said and done. So on your original order you had six inch wide hinges and I think I'm most certain what's contributing to the problem of your doors, as you had mentioned earlier, sagging in the middle is that you have a lot of weight up in this area. Okay, 70% uh, of the weight of the door is actually hung on the first hinge. And where is your first hinge, really? It's probably no more than, you know, that's probably no more than four and a half feet from the floor. So all the weights right here. What I'm thinking is happening is because you have a six inch wide hinge in here, which I, I, I know that you don't necessarily need, you have that hinge leaf Okay, you have a really long leaf. Okay, and the door, these two center doors, what do they want to do? They want to go this way. They want to go this way. So what's happening is these, the hinge leaf is actually because of the weight of the door being separated out this way. Okay, that's exasperated by the fact that your hinge point is very low on the outside. So what my recommendation is, is that we determine what width of hinge you actually need. So we can tell from the door here that you have some applied molding, okay? Uh, and, I'm, and that's obviously going to be on both sides. But what's difficult to tell is, do you actually have to have a six inch wide hinge? You might on the outside because we don't know what projecting trim you know we we don't know what the projection of the wall is here well these swing outside so it's the same problem we don't know what the projection uh, issue is there um, I'm assuming that this is the inside of these doors so No, it's not. This is clearly the, well, I don't know if you have three openings. These might be three different openings. Here's what we're driving at. What we're driving at is we need to determine what actual width you need. And there is a formula by which that we will uh, use to do that. And that formula is in a number of places. I happen to always think of it in the Stanley catalog. And that's the formula for wide throw hinge. It's down here somewhere. So in that Stanley catalog, here it is. So this is the formula that you use to determine how wide a hinge needs to be. And I can just tell you now that it's the door thickness minus back set times two plus your clearance, plus your inset, okay? And it's the clearance part that's really important. 
So the door thickness is whatever the thickness is. Let's say it's inch and three quarter. Um, let's say that your hinge back set is quarter inch. That means you have inch and a half. Inch and a half times two is three inch plus your clearance plus the inset. And the inset is the, which would be the minor dimension if, well, it doesn't have to be minor. It can be, that can be a, a large dimension. Um, I don't see, obviously I am standing on the wrong side to see any inset, but inset is going to be defined as, here's the frame. Okay, okay. sorry. Here's the frame, here's the door. The inset is the dimension from the face of the frame to the face of the door. You have to take that into account. You know, if it's a typical wood door, wood frame, it could be no inset, or it could be very small, like 3 seconds of an inch. If it's aluminum storefront, it could be no inset, or it could be very small. If it's hollow metal, it's gonna be about 3 seconds of an inch. But it could also be five inches, depending on what you're doing. It could be any dimension. You have to account for that. Uh, same sort of problem if you had jam extensions on your frame. That inset becomes more noticeable, certainly, with jam extensions. So it's door thickness minus hinge back set times two minus clearance my uh, plus clearance plus inset and that and then you use the next widest hinge so what do you need to be mindful of well certainly between this leaf and this leaf you need to be mindful of that applied trim what is the projection of the the applied trim times two so you're going to have that's going to be your clearance the projecting trim when you bring those doors parallel that's what you need to accomplish my point is, is you don't, whoever determined six inch wide hinges um, may have been doing so because they're thinking a heavier duty hinge. It's really the height of the hinge that's more important for carrying weight. So having a hinge that's six inch tall is probably not a bad idea at all, but it could be that you required four and a half inch hinges here um, and maybe here as well. So run the formula, uh, and, and we are in the middle of obviously working on replacing the hinges that were previously purchased from another supplier. But in order to get this as close to perfect as possible, we must run the calculation for clearance so that you absolutely have the vertical axis of pivoting as close to the center of the door thickness as possible. What I mean by that is in a frame, the ability of a hinge to do its job, that vertical axis of pivoting needs to be as close to the center line as possible, the center line of the thickness of the door. If we have artificially wide hinges, that's doing us no service at all to getting this door to want to do its thing. Why? You have a lot of weight hanging out off the door. Okay, The inclination of these is to, is to sag but to do more than sag, but also to arc open as well. That's my concern, that the doors are separating as well. We wanna take that vertical axis of pivoting and bring it as close to the center line of the thickness as possible. So please review that and please advise. Thank you.